What's up guys, today we're playing Epic 7, and today we're on a subscriber account, ran into trouble. As you guys know, I'm fixing this account, it was basically just a shell, and we're taking it all the way into endgame. This account could not do expeditions, they couldn't do labyrinth, they couldn't do any of the uh, hunts, level 13, they also only finished up to episode number 2, we are fixing all of that, and today we're taking one more step. Now, I have already finished Episode 2. I finished Episode 3, and we're about, I don't know, 70% done with Episode number 4. But I've gotten quite a lot of reputation, so today we are going to come in and start to claim some of this. Now, as you can see, we are finishing up a lot of the Labyrinth. We did Royal Capital already. Also, this account was only on something like Map number 5, in A13 and C13, so we finished a lot of those. Very good. Let's start to receive all of these rewards. Are there any more? You know, I wish they would just do all the rewards at one time. How many times am I going to have to click this? This is probably a mistake. <laughs> Next up, we'll go and we see Brave Crest. Uh, we're going to talk about this in a little bit. Ancient Coins and Transmit Stones, Breath of Orbis. This person did not have the Breath of Orbis yet. We also talked about in the last video how to power level all of these artifacts uh, achievements. So that's something that you should go check out if you haven't already. Let's see what we get. We do have Lasting Effect Increase. How many times am I going to have to click each one of these? Wow, okay. Maybe I shouldn't have saved <laughs> I shouldn't have saved them all. Can I click it any faster? This is a lot. There we go. Now on to Conclave. This is mostly finishing up the main storyline, which we have done. Also, we see some things into Elite Monsters and clearing out obstacles let's start to get all of these rewards as well now what you notice is that they only have 150 maximum energy so as we go through and we start to i think it's, which one is it it's one of these right here maximum energy is going to increase once you do conclave so that'll bring us up to the maximum soon now on memory chain we do have leveling up heroes pretty good and friendship and SSS now one thing that I like to do is I like to just use the heroes that don't have friendship that way you're able to um, get those free Molagora for starting four and five star heroes and that's something that's going to help you to develop your account and something that's going to help you with your with your skilling up of your heroes right make them stronger let's go now Take into the transmit stone shop I'm going to go ahead and pick up one of these, and while we're here, we'll finish these as well. You see that we have a Devotion skill. This one is Arch Demon Shadow, so this is something that we can buy, but not a huge priority right now. What we want to do is make sure we're buying the Equipment Conversion and the Molagora. We already bought out the Friendship, and when we come down into Conquest... You must be a Challenger 5 or more to get enough crests to buy everything in the season. But make sure you're buying the Molagora. Now someone had asked me this recently. Should I be buying this energy? And what I suggest is that you want to have enough conquest points to buy out all the gear. Then if you're a new player, you want to buy out the old seasons as well. But not all of them. It goes in reverse order. You want to come up and buy up to Conquest Season. So Conquest, Triumph, Indomitable, Valorous, Insight, and then the current season, whatever that season is, like Ravager or something like that. There we go. Those are going to roll better in your equipment score than the past seasons. And that's because they updated level 88 gear right after that, um, that last season, right before that Conquest Season. And so that gear is not going to be nearly as good. I would start with those pieces. And then maybe you can go into some of the older ones if you want. Knowing that they're going to roll about level 75 equivalent. Not up to 85 equivalent. 
So I would skip the energy until you do all of that. Once you're into the end game and you have quite a lot of conquest points, then you can come in and start doing this energy. Now let's go ahead and we're gonna come into the summons. This is, it's really your fault. Give me your account and I'm gonna do your summons. So let's see what we have. We are going to do first the elemental summons. Now you get this from doing your world boss. You also get this as rewards um, from doing a lot of different things. So now we're gonna get some sparks. Here we go. This is a five star unit. Can we get a shoe? I already have Crow. I don't need whoever this is. New rules are built on the blood of the preceding era. Man, Peyra is a beast. That was hot. Okay, so Peyra, very interesting. She is an opening hero. She has escort. I think she was the very first hero to have escort. She is still amazing. She is. She just is not preferred because now we have so many heroes that can be used as openers. Now we have things like Conqueror Lilias, we have Ran, we have a Knockwall, we have a lot of heroes that we can use. I still like Pyro. She is still cool. And if you want to use her, definitely a candidate. Um, but this account doesn't really doesn't have the type of gear yet. We're going to start to roll some good gear going into this next week. The next two weeks, we're going to have a lot of um, events for hunts. And so that's what I want to do. I really want to focus on hunt and get some of that gear. Next, let's go into selective summons. Now for your second selective summons, let's back up here. I have a video on this and I'll link it in case you want to see. Bomb Model Canna is free. Flan he already has. Ilanav he already has. War not worth picking up here. Senya he has. Cecilia dropped off quite a bit with the introduction of Brieg. Euphine they changed so you can no longer go through all of the labyrinth using that cheese effect. Ada, Ervalin, and Politis I think are more end game type um, uh, heroes. He already has Politis. Oh, actually he has all three of these. And Alencia I think is very good especially for a Ravi, but of course a Ravi has fallen off recently so the main priority you have here is going to be Shu. if you had to pick i would say Shu, senya politis and alencia are the best ones on the list so those are the ones that you should be picking up but this guy he needs to have Shu, so that's what we're going to have now this one is Shu and tagahel's book which is very good you can only get one five star in your selective summons so it doesn't matter if it's a hero or an artifact make sure you get a hero do not get an artifact then everything else is going to be fine but i wanted to have a tag of hills ancient book you really can't have too many of those so now we're going to go ahead and pick that up here we go it took me 214 tries to get this combination and we are going to summon shoe wow that was very anticlimactic. <laughs> 11 summons left here. Let's come in and see if we can get a Moonlight Hero. Now, for the Moonlight Hero, what I really want is a Moonlight Bologna. We get Crimson Armin. You know, Crimson Armin has had a tough time in this game, hasn't she? She was amazing, and she got nerfed, and she kind of fell off. Then she kind of got brought back a little. Then she kind of fell off again. Um, not really used too much. She's just too slow. Wanda has a specialty change. She is not impressed, but she looks super cool. We are probably not going to build her. We are going to finish the specialty change. And uh, Frida Wolf, the real star of Epic 7, she does the voice of A. Robbie. I think she does the voice of Moonlight Bologna as well. She is really the star of Epic 7. If rooting out evil is what warriors do, I'm already a warrior. Kind of hilarious. He says he's a warrior, and yet he's a ranger. <laughs> I don't know a lot of people that are using Roaming Warrior Leo, but he is a bomb hero. He's a little bit um, unreliable, but he is fun to play. If that's someone that you want to go into, we're not going to be building this account because this account doesn't have the basis for a lot of the heroes that you might use for bomb. 
Wander Silk, one of the fastest heroes in the game. She is pretty good on this S number three because she has a silence decrease attack for two turns, decreasing the combat readiness 100%. It only works on one hero. It works on everyone. Super overpowered. But uh, Wander Silk can be really cool and people really don't expect her, which is kind of fun as well. Who are we gonna get next? We see Crescent Moon written. They recently buffed her just a little bit. Another opener. If she were maybe five or 10 speed faster, I would totally rock this it hero, duty. but not quite as fast. Come now let's go in and we are going to look at a recall. So if you guys don't know, they released Elvira, which I kind of hate that name, it's super played out, but they released Elvira and she's not bad. She's not. What I did, and I summoned two. So you see, I have one and two. Let's lock this one down. And what happened was they released her and immediately the player abuse started and it became torture inside the world arena. And so <laughs> they decided to put down a recall and change her skills a little bit. She is pretty good, actually, not too bad. You wanna build her with a lot of uh, attack, a lot of speed, HP and defense, and a ton of effect resist, 200% effect resist if you can have it. And what we see is that she gets a little bit of effect resist, cannot trigger a critical hit, stops the enemy from getting fighting spirit. So really good against the Abyssal Euphine enemy. She's a direct counter and she's not limited. But if you summoned her and you leveled her to 50, now you get to recall her. So I happened to get two of them and I did it within about 50 summons. So because of that, we are going to recall this hero. Now, when you recall her hero, you get all the stuff back. As you can see, I didn't really put anything into her. So no big deal there. Let's do the recall, and then we get to pick who we want. Now, this is an important way to get a hero that you really need. On my main account, I need no one, so I'm just going to keep her. And a lot of people are angry about that. But on this account, they need quite a lot of people. I think Knockwall, really good here. I think that Violet can be fun. Shu, we no longer need because we have her on the selective summons. A lot of folks do like Senya, but her usage, I think, fell off a little bit. If you are a new player, you need to have Tamarin. Now, you can pick her up from the uh, Story Summon instead. That might be an easier place to get Tamarin, but she is fantastic. You use her for a ton of stuff, and she'll get you very far into Abyss. Scrolling down the list here, Crowl, I'm just going to say, probably my favorite hero in the game. Crow and Zahak, man, they're amazing. This account already has him, so we're not gonna pull him in. Let's go down the list a little bit more. Briig is the other hero that I think that you absolutely need. Now, if you are a new player, you have not gone to episode number five yet, pick up Briig here. You can't get him through the story summon until episode five, which might take you, I don't know, a month or two months to go through. And then also, you uh, cannot get him anytime soon because he just had his banner not too long ago. So he's not going to come around for a little while. Pick him up here. And then I'd like to say also, Rowana, one of my favorite heroes. She's super great to use against Moonlight Landy. Super great hero. So if you already have Briag, Rowana is good. Zahak, here he is, one of my other favorite heroes. This guy completely deletes things like Aiden, totally murders things like Landy and Senya. So those are my hero picks that I choose. For this account though, we are going to pick up Briag, who's going to do amazing for us on the W13. But also we're gonna use him into Abyss. We're gonna use him into every expedition. Like he is, he's the equivalent of Tamarin, except that he is a knight. 
Now, speaking of that, let's go ahead and we are going to come in and we are going to make some level 60 heroes. When I started on this account, they had 32 level 60 heroes. Uh, now we're up to 36. And these ones at the very top are the ones that I made. We have a Mercedes who's all around good, plus 15 her, and she'll be amazing. She, when I go, if you guys haven't seen my video on this, I've made a couple of them, completely murder Zio in episode number four. People are like trying to use all these weird teams. I use Mercedes and she can almost solo it. Like it's ridiculous. She is amazing. We also have Mui. Now I brought him in for W13. A Mui team will be W13 in one minute and a half or less. Very good. And I leveled him inside the hunt. So this is important. You don't have to waste a bunch of materials on him. You don't have to waste a bunch of like penguins. At plus 30 or at level 30, I put him into hunt and he just leveled up right in hunt as I was farming. I also made a seaside Bologna. She's also into the hunt. And then now um, we're going to come down and we're going to look at the last hero that I built, which is going to be Billion. Now this Billion is okay. What we see is 22,000 HP and 1,200 defense. That's probably the minimum you can get away with. I want to have close to 100% crit chance if I can with about this crit damage, maybe even up to 250. But I did the best I could with some of the gear that I had. It needs to have more HP. I think what we want to do is probably put him onto an HP pair of boots. I think that would be okay. It might be the only way I can get any higher because we're using speed pair of boots. Um, we're not really getting up to the 25k HP that I want, which will make him a little slower. And we have him, or I guess her, right? Billion. Uh, onto Wings of Light and Shadow. This is the only artifact that I have. Ideally, I would like to put them on Elberus, but I just don't have one. Let's come in and we're going to make some new level 60 heroes today. We have Airwell. Airwell is amazing. She has a specialty change. We are going to finish it. Top tier hero. This one has 177. Once we finish her specialty change, she'll put her over 200. But I want to make sure I get the 25k HP. So I might have to swap out these boots. We're going to see about that. Let's go ahead and we are going to promote Airwell. If you have her and you have not uh, utilized her, if you haven't pulled her up to level 60, make sure you do that. Go finish special change super, super fast. Let's see who else we have. Moon Bunny, while good, a little bit lower on my list. Coming down here, Angel of Light, I think, is next. Not built yet. I can make a pretty good Angel of Light, I think. I think. What we want out of her is we want a ton of speed, a ton of effectiveness, and we can get her to 130. That's not great. Not great. 148. I'd like to pull her at to close to these stats. I want to get up to about 180, 200% effectiveness. If you can build her at 230 or 250, I think that's okay. 230 will go before something like a hand guy. 250, 260 will go before, and then you can. Um, that's really the, that's really the factor that you want, right? How am I going to use this person? Most heroes, like maybe like the Hawk, they're not going to be built faster than 260 most of the time. So if you build an Angel of Light 260, then you can silence them. And then their first turn is just a S1, uh, or you can force your enemy to use something like immunity or to skip their turn on a Calric, then Angel of Light, then you can silence everyone, and then uh, they won't be able to cleanse that until the next turn. So 230 or 250, 260, something like that. And I think she works really well. But Angel of Light, and she literally like broke the game when she came out. She's still top tier meta unit. And I always say this, barefoot. Okay, you're boss if you can go barefoot and still whoop people. So that's all I really got to say about that, right? <laughs> Next, let's go for Briag. He's around here somewhere. 
I really want to level up Crow. I do. But I want Brieg because he is going to be amazing. He has pretty much everything that you need. And because this account was not very good into Expeditions, I got to level three Expeditions on a few of them. I haven't seen them all yet because the rotation hasn't happened. Um, but struggling in the Light Expo and struggling a little bit in the Water Expo as well. And Brig is going to help with that. So let's go ahead and we are going to bring this guy down. I think it takes like 20 or 30 of these. Ideally, it would be great if I could select how many I want to use. One must but... never stop learning and improving. All right, hey, that was good. That was lucky. Now let's take him to six stars. And then now I'm not going to put any more penguins into him. Just like we had with Mui, I'm going to level up the Brieg inside W13. He'll get not only friendship in W13, but also he'll get the XP and he'll be able to level up to level 60. No problem, doesn't cost you anything extra. No extra energy, no extra anything. Go in and just level them up right there in the hunt. All right. Now we have, I think, let's see, who else do we have? Free Spirit, she will work in B13. I don't have the gear to build her quite yet, but B13, for the defense break, we don't have to level her up. Crow is on the list. Ilanav, you know, he already took Ilanav to plus 10. At that level, just take her to 60. That's all. Just, just take her all the way to 60. Curious, we do not have to use class plus 50. Now, if you uh, want to use Curious, put her into your Grace of Growth. That way, you are able to use her at level 60 without spending a bunch of resources. Then when you're done, you take her out. Abyss, I think level 102? It's the Selene level. You have to have 160 effectiveness, and you no longer need Curious. You no longer have to build her. Melissa, super awesome. Can't use her. I just can't. We have Sylvan Sage Vivian, though. Let's go. Sylvan Sage Vivian is our last six star that we are going to pull down tonight there we go and we're definitely going to use her let's put her at the top that way i remember to build her now i did talk to this player and they told me that what they wanted was a what lone crescent sell? balona well, and i'm buy? not certain that i'm actually going to get a lone crescent balona from doing the uh, galaxy summons right so we have the headhunting event and we're going to kind of go into that headhunting event and talk about what heroes that you should really be looking out for. Now because he wants Lone Crescent hey, Bologna, in my opinion, you just go for her. She is a top tier hero. Her animation is super awesome. She's useful in a ton of content comes and goes you can here. use her against Money moonlight land you can pull her in against Shu. you can pull her in against something like a senya like she guarantees crit and when they changed her s number one for that soul burn hey, it hits 20 30 000 damage it's fantastic so we're definitely going to try and pick him up for her and i will not regret it she is great Hey, Am I going to get one something? more? Come on, Come bro. Take a look. On this account, I have 17,000 Sky Stones. I did spend 900 to get the Epic Pass. Um, but now what we're going to start doing is we're going to start getting a lot of these bookmarks. That way we can get more and more heroes. And we have a... A weekend coming up for buffs and i have 130 leaves on this account so i don't imagine i'm going to go through all of those but if i do go through all of them i'm not going to be shy about spending those sky stones because what's going to take this account to that next level what's going to take it to being uh sort of beginner and moving into end game 
doing better into a lot of content is going to be gear. And to do that, I just I need to farm. I need to farm more than I need to have heroes. And that's really something that you have to decide for yourself. But honestly, you can do the entire game with three star heroes. You can do the whole game with just a handful of five stars. You don't actually need to have a lot of five star units unless you're going for high ranking RTA because then you have to have counters, right? You have to be able to draft uh, counter heroes to the popular meta heroes. So headhunting, who should you choose? It's a good question. Next up, we're gonna go into who you should choose from your headhunting event. Now again, this person wanted to have the Moonlight below in it. I think she is a great choice. She hits super hard. She counters half of the meta right now. Very, very good hero. Now we're also gonna choose who else is in my top tier. This is not gonna be a tier list. I'll put one in the description in case that you want to go and check that out. But what I have in my top tier, Lionheart Sermia. She is fantastic. Her passive ability gives her the fighting spirit. Anytime someone does a dual attack or a counter, it spells all buffs. It gives her combat readiness. She can do her S number three pretty much every single turn. AoE penetrate 50%. Man, she hits super hard. Last Rider Crow as well. He is in my top tier. He has a very good passive ability that allows him to continue to get his S3, which is an AoE. It does about like five to 7,000 or so. Grants immunity, grant shield. I use him as a second tank when I'm doing something like arena. I just auto battle, right? This meta, so easy just to auto battle. Something like a Rwana, Dark Corvus, Crow, Last Rider Crow. Doesn't matter what team, they will kill everyone. Let's see who else my top tier list. Lone Crescent Bologna, we did talk about. She has a ability where she always crits right here on her S number three and her S number one. I don't know why they didn't put it on her passive. I guess because when you put it on her S1 and S3, then a, a heroes who counter passive abilities doesn't work, but she's amazing. Ken, honestly, is in my top tier list. Now, this is the hero that I recommend picking up. Uh, this and Spectre Tenebria from your first Moonlight Blessing. He is the same as Lone Crescent Bologna. Always lands a critical hit on his S number three. He has a Provoke 100% chance on his S number one. Grants himself Vigor, penetrates by 40%. He hits super hard. And if you make him bulky enough, then you're going to be able to survive a lot. Mediator, the best cleanser in the game. He cleanses the debuffs from himself, puts up immunity, gives attack buff as well, barrier, and decrease attack. Now, Cowric, and also Lilius that we talked about, or I meant to talk about, you can pick them up from the second Moonlight Blessing, so make sure you pick those up from there. They're probably going to be the best in tier for those slots, right? I think they're best in tier there. Zeo, Zeo changed the speed game. He did. He's like, he's like similar to AOL. When you pick a Zeo, your team has to, it forces them to change how they're about to play. And it's because of his passive ability. If you build a Zeo, he only needs to be like 250, 260, and he'll outspeed 315 Ran or Peyra, you know, anyone except for maybe like Lua because she can go into stealth mode, but he is going to outspeed and he gets 50% uh, crit. Did I already pass it? 50% crit somewhere along the lines here. And so he hits really hard. Now, if you build him to 200% effectiveness, now we have a silence, a pushback, and remove buffs. So now he's a counter to air well, which is really nice. You build him at 200% effectiveness. 50% crit chance, something like 255, 260 speed, and he's gonna do fantastic. And then, you know, try and go for your uh, crit damage after that, and you're gonna love Zio. It's one of my very favorite heroes. And then the last in my top tier is going to be Spectre Tenebria. 
Now she does work quite well when we go into Abyss. A lot of people do like her in the PvP combat. Uh, she has a stun onto her S number 3. You cannot hit her until she's the last hero, except with AoE abilities. She hits two people on her S number 1, and you can Soulborn it for an extra attack, which is very good. Now, people do like to have the poison for Abyss, which works fantastic. But after you finish Abyss, she's still very usable into PvP. And then I do want to bring up Briar Witch as well. When we look at things like Arbiter Vildred, we look at things like Mercedes, we look at things like now Euphine, uh, Moonlight Euphine, that always has the Resurrection Artifact, uh, Holy Sack, bringing in a Briar which is Zarya is fantastic against those heroes. Not only does she hit heroes that have evasion, but then they cannot revive, so you only have to kill them one time. And she looks amazing. She, when they brought her out, that was probably the best animation in the game, the best animation for a long time, one of my favorite heroes. Anywhere I can bring Briar Witch, I try and bring her, she's great. Now for next tier heroes, it's really gonna vary. Right? It's really going to vary. I love Spirit Eye Selene quite a lot. She destroys a ton of heroes, but you can't bring her against everyone. Same thing with Bellion. Uh, you can use her onto counter set. You can also use her onto injury set. Um, honestly, I like counter better. I do. I bring her onto injury, but she takes forever to bring someone down on their HP. Just not worth it. We also see here that we have Solitaria of the Snow. She is great. Solitaria will solo a whole team in the right conditions. So she is worth uh, picking up here. Dark Corvus is one of my favorite heroes. A really good one to use into Guild War. The Dark Corvus team with a Knight and a Soul Weaver, they can pretty much kill just about anyone who doesn't have an injury. And then we have Straws, right? Now this hero can go in and ignore um, the defense, penetrate defense 100% on the hero with the highest HP. I often bring them, if you know who's gonna have the highest HP, they're automatically dead. I really loved him into Apocalypse Ravi, uh, but she kind of fell off a little bit. In the lower tiers of Guild War, you still see a lot of Apoc Ravi. The higher tiers, not so much. I love Straz to kill her. And as we go down here, you know what? That's probably about it. Death Dealer Ray recently, like, recently got a buff. He's used a lot into top tier battles, but for most people, not going to see a ton of action. Remnant Violet has a bunch of counters. He's still really fun to play, honestly. Really fun to play. But Evasion, I just don't like Evasion. It will break your heart. But if your heart's going to get broken... This is what I wanted to look like in high school, okay? Remnant Violet, this is who I wanted to be. It never happened. It didn't, it just didn't. But I tried. <laughs> Next up, let's go into tower level five. I found the perfect team on this account. So this is basically auto everything and it's just so satisfying to watch. So let's go in and we're gonna conquer that next. Enough to play. Uh, I, I, play I cards. 
Easy on you. <laughs> Obey me. Obey me. Let the goddess lead the way. That tower is just so fun to watch. It's so satisfying. If I could just do tower, if they made a game of all tower and that's all you did every day, I would totally do it. That's the very first thing I do when I log in. If there's a tower, that's the very first thing I'm going to do. But now we're going to come into Huns. Now, we were able to do Wyvern 13, but it was super, super slow. Golem 13 was passed, but there was no decent team. Banshee 13, same thing. Now, as a Manic, and also with Kades, they were on level 5. So we were able to bring them up to 13, and we're going to be setting teams up for them shortly. Today, we're going to go into Wyvern, and we're going to go into this team that I have set up. Now, this team here will do Wyvern in 90... Well, this team does it in about 120 seconds or less. And that's because we don't have the ideal build. Once I put a Brieg here, and we have a more consistent defense break, the next thing you know, this is going to be a 90 second or less. Maybe we get down closer to a minute, like on my main account. But let's go ahead and talk about these heroes, and then we're going to show you uh, what that battle looks like. Now, I don't typically build Angelica, honestly, um, but he already had her, and so I put some gear onto her. What you want is some decent defense, some decent health, Anything left can go into Effect Resist. She's super easy to build. And then pretty much any one of the explosive equipments uh, is usable. He already had this one onto her, and I just left it there. He also has her onto Prophetic Candlestick. I think that is fine. You can also build Angelic Montmorency, which is my choice uh, for this battle. But if, you're, if you have Angelica already, go ahead and use her, and I think she'll be good. Next, we have Mui. Now, I did build this hero. Uh, he was not built previously. And you can see he's using all free gear. In fact, this level 78 gear, this comes from the Labyrinth. Doesn't have to be super fast. 120 is fine. 3,000 or more attack. 85% crit chance. We seem a little bit low. Everything else can go into crit damage and effectiveness. You want to have 65% effectiveness for W13. And I think that your Mui is going to be good. We have them onto Daydream Joker. It's going to make him hit a little bit harder. Uh, if you don't have Daydream Jokers, I say you want to build four to five max copies. That way you don't have to switch around your Daydream Joker on different heroes for different hunts. You're going to forget it, and the next thing you know, you're going to go into Guild War, and you're going to have Daydream Joker on. Now we have Seaside Polona. He already had her at plus 15, I think. And all we do is put gear onto her. 185% speed is going to make you go before the first wave boss, or the first wave, you know, like monsters. If you have someone who can give her attack buff, so you put them at 200 speed, then she goes next at 188. She will clear that whole first wave by herself. He has her onto the special drink. This really has to be plus five to be any good, or else. Put her on Portrait of Saviors, and she'll do good there. Cigarette, actually very easy to build. All you need is a bunch of attack and a bunch of crit damage, and again, at least 85% crit chance. Now, you can get 65% effectiveness here, but you don't really need it. You have enough damage now with Mui and with Brieg or with the other heroes that you can defeat this boss before he gets to his first shield phase. That's the goal. When you want to do a W13 fast, you have to be able to beat him before the shield phase. That means that you have to get a defense breakdown, and you have to be able to build up your hero's damage so that they can really do a lot on that boss. Now, I would say at least 4,500 attack. As you can see, no rage set, and it should be fine. For your exclusive equipment, I think you want to have the number three, not the number one. This number three will be a lot better than having 20% extra bleed damage. Does that even take you to 100? It takes you to 90. 90%. Smile gate, come on. At least give her 100% if you're going to give her a, a dirty, busted exclusive equipment. 
at least make it 100%. Man, that's, that's horrible. <laughs> she doesn't need speed. This rolled a little bit more HP, so she has HP, but she does not need that. And then try and get to 275 to 300 crit damage. I think you'll be good. Then next thing is we have Daydream Joker. This is mandatory, at least on her. You don't have to put it on Mui if you don't want to. Um, you can put a different damage artifact on him. But for Sigret or for Alexa, if you choose to use her, then you want to make sure that you have this Daydream Joker. You cannot unlock Alexa that quickly. So if you're doing something besides W13, Alexa will clear it as fast or faster than Sigret. She's easier to build. Um, and you don't need to have Molagora into her because she's a three-star hero. So consider her as well, you know, if you're in that position. If you're brand new and you're really breaking into W13 for the first time, or if you're rushing hunts to try and get a lot of gear, then go with Cigarette and she'll be great. But don't sink a bunch of the Molagora into her. She will be just fine if you take her down to a plus four on the number two, and then take her down, you can go to plus five, but at least plus three onto her number three, and she's going to be good. This is what you get for ruining my vacation. Oh. All decisions have consequences. Let the goddess lead the way. It's too late to back out now. Please disappear. Rest in peace. I won't go easy on you. Remove all obstacles. Oh, my. Too late for regret. Now the next thing we're going to break into is going to be Banshee. As I said before, we have a hunt buff event and we're going to farm a ton of stuff. I have 31 million gold. That's probably going to be closer to 60 million gold by the end of the weekend. And we are going to build up a Bologna. Bologna is going to help a lot as we go into our B13 one shot. I plan to do it in under one minute which is very nice. And I don't need to have a Biken. I don't need to have any other hero. We're gonna do it with Green Bologna. She'll be fantastic. And so that's gonna be coming up in our next video. But today, I think that we've made some really good progress. I'm gonna continue going through the story and then start farming over the weekend. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Give me a like so other people just like you can find it as well. Until next time, happy hunting and good luck on your battles.